just briefly because I was so wrapped up in my own shit that I I totally forgot to talk about this last time. Yeah. Uh, was the whole uh, Aaron Schwartz debacle? Is that how yeah. you pronounce that word? Debacle. I don't know. I think it's debacle. <laughs> English is a second language for me, buddy. A quick recap. Uh, this 26-year-old hacktivist commits suicide, uh, I think it was January 11th. Uh, uh, one of the uh, co-founders of Reddit, no? One, but it, yeah, the, some of the current founders of Reddit, co-founders of Reddit, will deny it. But yeah, he was, he was on Reddit at the beginning. They had a, when uh, Reddit sold out to Condé Nast, he, he basically got him, engineered his own firing, walked away with like a million dollars or two or something like that. But then he turned around and spent all his money starting these hacktivist groups that opposed SOPA and PIPA and basically kept the internets Tay internets uh, free and he was also a big proponent of freedom of information in the sense that uh, there was uh, there's information that is in the public domain but you have to pay to access it and so basically he paid to access a bunch of court uh, court filings that mm -hmm. are that were available and then he posted them for free and the FBI investigated him and some other people for that and ended up not charging him but he was under investigation for a few months then he went uh, to, I'm sure he's done other, he did other stuff too, but then the big one is he went to MIT, which he had access to. He went, you know, he walked in there. They knew who he was. And he walked into an unsecured, uh, like, server server closet, like, uh, switch, switch room. Yeah. Connected a laptop and uh, using school credentials, using, like, credentials that he had, he started downloading um, papers from JSTOR, like, uh, scientific papers. Mm-hmm. Which are I think, I think most, I most of that, that research is paid for by universities, but then the universities have to pay fees to access it, and it's created this sort of tiering system where a university like MIT, that's really big and really rich, can afford access to this whole the whole library, all these libraries, like all these like online archives of these journals, but then smaller universities can't afford it at all or can only afford part of it, and so you've created the, these tier universities, and so he felt that these papers should be freely available, given that. A lot of them, the research, a lot of the research in them is paid for by public money. The researchers don't get paid for people paying for access. Um, and really, and JSTOR, is, JSTOR isn't supposed to be a nonprofit. So anyway, he downloaded like four million of them. He had to do a few hacks to have that work because they blocked him a few times. They were kind of like they were kind of playing cat and mouse with him. They realized someone was doing this, so they blocked a MAC address. So he went in, he changed his MAC address. So he wasn't changing his MAC address to hide his computer. He was changing his MAC address so he could download. Uh, more stuff. It, was, it wasn't so much of a stealth move. In the end, he got caught uh, and the uh, JSTOR event basically eventually said, you know, we're not going to prosecute. It's not, it's not in the public interest to prosecute. Um, but MIT sort of hummed and hawed over it, which gave the U.S. Attorney's Office who, and this is like a, so it's a federal charge of like computer hacking or, or whatever, like, um, I can't remember what the exact charges were, but there were originally four. They upped them to 13, I think just two days before he committed suicide. Um, he faced between, he faced maybe up to 50 years in prison for this, 30 mm -hmm. to 50 years in prison. That's what they were threatening him with because the the thing is you threaten people with really big things and then you try to plea bargain down. And he refused to plea bargain because he didn't want a felony on his record. Right. And so they were, they were, you know, coming at him like you'd come at like a hardened criminal. And, and he suffered from depression and they think that this contributed to his suicide. Um, and, and regardless of whether that's why he killed, uh, that was related to why he killed himself or not, in terms, of, and I, I think it is, but regardless, I mean, this is the system as it's set up in the US and Canada, it's very similar, and Japan, it's really fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. we, we have a system that's, that's set up to, we, we prosecute crimes that are essentially harmless the same way we, we prosecute a mass murderer. Yeah. Or, or and 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 in le and less than we prosecute people who fucking collapsed our financial system. Yeah. Oh, totally. Because in some ways they technically didn't break any laws. Mm -hmm. They claim. Yeah. Uh, they fucked us bad and they don't get punished. They still have their jobs and they get their bonuses. A few token people were put put in prison, but really in general, most of the people who caused the crisis are still are still out. And meanwhile, someone who downloaded papers from a nonprofit that wasn't charging them. Uh, was wasn't sorry wasn't charging was didn't want to charge him didn't want to pursue the prosecution and papers that were made possible by public money and yeah i mean what the fuck i mean anyone anyone who who says that he deserved to be prosecuted for this is an internet troll that's essentially what it is uh yeah. what do you think do you think his other options were rather than i mean it was stealing but 
At the well, same no, time. It, how, wait, wait, wait. No, no. You can't say it was stealing. Stealing is when I take something from you and you don't have it anymore. That's stealing. Okay. So, so it wasn't stealing. He wasn't stopping anyone else from accessing these things. No, but I mean, this is what they for. consider. This is what they consider stealing. Like, if it, if it wasn't papers, it was a movie or music or something like that. This is information that is. Well, we said we, we had to stop. We had to stop using their words for it. That's the problem. We uh -huh. had to stop using the the movie industry's word for it because they'll call it piracy or stealing. But it's 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 copying, and you can you can argue it's illegal copying. But it's not the same as stealing because when I steal something from you, I take it away, and you don't have it anymore. Sure, that's sure. theft. Yeah. So it's not it's not it's not content theft. It's copyright infringement because you don't have the right to copy it. That's the violation. But what the problem is, you have cops knocking down fucking doors in the U.S. over copyright infringement. Yeah. And. That that's not right. The, and treating the, the and treating government. those individuals as criminals, as, as if they just murdered yeah. someone, as if and, they've just you know, um, and 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 even and taking them to civil court and having fines that are so high that no ordinary person could ever possibly hope to pay them, just so you can get so. And most people settle out of court for for a you know sure. a ton of money. Yeah, they set like each song is like one hundred and fifteen thousand. Well, if you actually add that up, it's more than the fucking GDP of the fucking world. Yeah, for most people's music collections. So I, I didn't. I didn't mean it as like a, a stealing. Con like I, I didn't mean to say it that way. I just. I try to think of a, another way of putting it. Where, um, how could he have obtained the information that that he accessed and made it available? Like, could you know? There, MIT is basically representing a, a ton of scientists and engineers or whatever who do who make these papers but they didn't do every single one they just had access to archives right is that yeah. correct yeah so so all he and some, did was, some of them are in the public domain in, and some of them are in public domain so the, the ones that were in public domain that there's no question whether or not he took them uh, you know well, it, he wasn't, he wasn't or not. charged he wasn't charged for taking the documents. He was in charge. He was charged like for like for the, for sort the of action, wire fraud the, and wire fraud and stuff like that for the act the the actions he took in order to get them. Right. He wasn't actually charged because JSTOR wouldn't charge him for taking the the papers. Mm -hmm. they, he, I don't think they charged him with that. It was they were they were, it was like you know like wire fraud that kind of thing. Those yeah. kind of laws. Okay. That are meant that are meant for people who are like doing like financial f fraud and stuff like that. Okay. And and people who are doing like like uh, malicious like really malicious hacking, um, I mean there's you could no, argue you could argue no that what he was doing whatsoever that he was going to take this information and resell it, right? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But And so and so yeah. you know you could you could say too. We don't know that what he was going to do because I, they caught him before he did it. Yeah, but I mean, but there is a certain there is a certain line that, that needs to be drawn for, not for him, but for other assholes. Who go out and do stuff, you know, and 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 that's that's essentially what the government's you know trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out a way to sort of say, okay, what's gone too far? I agree. Breaking down somebody's door over information that's out there, especially online, and made you know either publicly or you know through some company. If a company's dumb enough to put their information online, or if if they if they have access to it online, it's it's up for grabs as far as I'm concerned. Right. Well, there's there's a different there's a difference between hacking, uh, so like PSN, which I mean, <laughs> like you can justify that yeah. for other sure. reasons. There's a difference yeah. between hacking PSN and yeah. taking people's private information that was supposed to be stored by the company. And you right. can argue that like Sony should have protected that information better and blah 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 blah. Yeah, you're but, talking about people's but, credit cards but, here. Right? But that's yeah, people's credit cards, which is not the type of information that there's a, there's there's a very good reason why that information is kept secret. Mm -hmm. But and passwords and blah 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 blah. And uh, and so that's that's a different thing. And we can have a different argument about that. But we're, what we're talking about is someone who took uh, who took information that even if it's not public domain, and some of it was, if it's not public domain, it could be argued that this, it retards research if it's not available, if it's not widely right. available. If sure. I wanted to, it's like for instance, if I wanted to read one of those papers, I would have had to pay like $35 US sure. to read an eight page uh, research paper, or a 23 page research paper, a PDF file. Mm -hmm. and that's ridiculous. And what, like, so if you're an independent researcher, there's a there's there's setting this bar to entry 
which is too high. And one of the great things the internet's done for the for music as well is it set the bar to entry lower, mm -hmm. because we don't need to worry about distribution anymore. Right. We got YouTube. We've got fucking BitTorrent. We can distribute our own shit. Yeah. So it's the distribution. It's the distribution side. And so basically, scientific papers are still distributed by companies who are charging way too much money for access, maybe not in terms of their own operating costs, but in terms of the cost to society of having to pay 30 to $35 for one paper. <laughs> yeah, so that's if the I'm real, a, If I'm a journalist doing real crime. <laughs> something, I, can't, I can only read the abstract unless I can afford 35 bucks. which if I'm working for a newspaper, maybe I can. If I'm not, maybe I can't. This information, it's pub the whole point of science is that it's supposed to be, science, scientists are supposed to be able to argue this information, exchange it with each other, and it's not possible unless yeah. you're part of one of these universities that can pay for it. Right, right. Yeah. So some dude in the Ukraine who's maybe working on something, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not able to work on it because he can't get access. Yeah. So that's what, that's what it's about. So it's, it's, it's those, that type of like hacking, and I hesitate to call it hacking, Cracking, you could say, and he didn't even do much of that. Like no. it was, it was really he, he just connected, used account. He connected and, a computer and he connected to that remotely and copied files, right? Yeah, copied files. Had to mask his MAC address a few times when they blocked him because he was down doing it. Like, I mean, he yeah, he you could argue that the worst thing he did was he probably used a lot of system resources doing that, which probably may have slowed down slowed things down for everyone else. But for anyone who used to use the library search computers in the Toronto Reference Library, I yeah. mean, come on, like. <laughs> Oh, boom, oh, it was a little bit slow. Oh, boo hoo hoo. I'm so sad for you. <laughs> you never had to use fucking multicat. Yeah. We wait five minutes to get a to get a catalog number. You're sitting there going doop, 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 waiting, 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 waiting. I'm just trying to search for fucking book. Yeah. Um they should have a uh of rule for what's that what's the iRobot thing? It cleans the floor. No, no, not yeah, iRobot. Oh, the laws of robotics? Is Ros, that what you're talking laws about? Laws of robotics. The uh, laws of robotics. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the laws of robotics apply it to the laws of hacking. So the first rule of hacking is... Don't talk about uh, hacking. No, <laughs> it's not Fight Club. Um, the first rule is uh, who benefits from the, from the hack. Right. And then the second rule is, as long as you're not making any money from it, then it's okay. And then the third law is, uh, can the person who's actually selling the item that's being hacked justify the cost of the reason why the first rule applied? What was the Does first that make rule sense? again? I can't remember. <laughs> We're going to have to rewind the tape. <laughs> Yeah, the, tape. the first one. The first one is dude, uh, you're showing your age. I know. Oh my god, there were like, there's like a clip of some kids being shown a, a audio cassette for the first time, <laughs> and they and they have no idea what the hell it is, <laughs> they, because they've been using their iPods for so long. They have like, what the hell is this? Oh my god. No idea. Yeah, the first rule was. Uh, uh, oh shit! I I really don't know. Oh, maybe I can get it in the embed. Hold on. Yeah, but I mean, I think no, because I think I think that those rules don't work because, like, for instance, what if you're, what if say there's a distribution system to say distribute books and you hack it so that your book can be distributed in it? Because don't forget, hacking isn't necessarily computer stuff. It also involves. Are you, so, I mean, like, are you making any money off of it? Well, no, but that's the thing is like, why can't you make money off of it? If like, for instance, a distribution system is shutting you out and you find a way to get in so that yeah. you can make money from something you created. Like that, I, I can't think of anything that operates like that right now, but that would be an example of, I think that would be legitimate and it, you'd be making money from it. By distributing... I, think it, I think it's more if you're making money from it at the expense of someone else. You're making money... From it. Okay, you so you're you're looking at it the other way around then, because I was looking at it as a rule for a hacker, and to justify the. the yeah. No, I am. Oh. I am no. A, a rule for a rule for someone who's like who's who's doing doing hacks is that if you're making money if if you're making money from it, are you making money from it at the expense of someone else? Because I think there's there's hacks you could do that you could potentially make like for instance you could say oh I've hacked um I've I don't know I've hacked this I've hacked Skype's logarithm in terms of how it routes calls yes and i made this really cool graphic from it and i'm selling it as a print okay you could but make the, money from that 
you can make money from that, but it's but the original but reason for the for the Skype program has nothing to do with art. Yeah, my so my point is, and that's my point is that the rule is you shouldn't but, make money. You shouldn't you shouldn't make money at the expense of someone else. That Skype should be legal. Is free, first of all, right? I, I I would say it would make more sense if you if you downloaded uh, Adobe Photoshop for free, and rather than pay the company and all the engineers and everybody who wrote the program so that you could make a piece of art that you're going to sell, that's wrong. Right? Oh, see, I would say no, it's not, because I would so say, that, unless unless you're fucking Picasso, because artists do not make shitloads of money necessarily, so if someone downloads Photoshop, makes a piece of art using it... Okay, well, what's the... Piece, my, my point is that fucking Photoshop costs, what, 500 bucks? Mm -hmm. And so some dude who's... Who lives in a one-bedroom efficiency with a fucking bare bulb lamp hanging over his head? What he's not allowed to do art because he can't fucking afford the software? Fuck that shit! Do you know what I mean? Like he's and he's not making the money at the expense of Photoshop because if he didn't download Photoshop illegally, he wouldn't own it legally and wouldn't be able to make the art anyway. Okay. So that's why I say the clause at the expense of you shouldn't make any any money at the expense of someone else. Now, if this guy started, started making like really amazing art and was selling a lot, then I think he'd be morally obligated at that point to purchase Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's but your what I'm example. Saying. But your example with Skype. The example would be that if you, because we're talking about hacking, so it's not necessarily like. Okay, so you break, let's say you find a way to break into some area that you're not supposed to be in that gives you, say, the route of one particular call over the world. Like, because it's, I don't know, Skype, it used to be anyway, it was like a peer to peer thing. So, and right. it, makes a, it makes a really cool pattern, which you then find an interesting way of illustrating. Like, you run it through, use that information, run it through an algorithm that makes this really cool graphic, and then you sell that as a print. Okay, and what? So you've so taken you've taken you've, you've taken, taken the information. algorithm, and what are you editing it on? Photoshop. Why are you bringing this back to Photoshop? <laughs> Fuck Photoshop! No, you wrote a fucking program that makes the art. Okay, what yeah. Okay. From, what you got from Skype was yeah. was this data that you wouldn't have been able this, to just think of on your own. The Skype one, you should feel more guilty over. No, no, I'm saying no. I'm saying not. I'm saying that's why you have to change the second rule to at the expense of someone else because you're making that art out of information that you that you pulled out of like say this a Skype session like this routing session that yeah. you weren't supposed to have access to but it's irrelevant to them they don't lose anything by that being public yeah but you make okay, money so from Skype, it so Skype doesn't lose anything from it is what no you're that's my point the second rule should be you shouldn't make money at the expense of someone else the expense of somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the basic rule, and then and then yeah, so it's like a poor person who can't afford the five hundred bucks for Photoshop that they need to make their art, unless they're making unless they start making a living from their art. I don't think they might be under a legal obligation to buy Photoshop, but I don't right. think they're under an ethical obligation to buy Photoshop. So here's here's the ultimate question then: They make a piece of artwork with illegal software or yeah. software downloaded that costs five hundred dollars, and then uh, print or make a print of a photo that they sell for five hundred dollars. Do they now use that five hundred dollars to buy a full version? No. So they don't buy one that's, at that's, all. That's, that's that's that is a gray area. If you're doing it for one piece of art and it's like the it's the same value, then it's kind of like unless that was your point of making the artwork in the first place. But if you're going to continue to make things that you're selling regularly for $500, then I think at that point you're under an ethical obligation to pay for Yeah, Photoshop. but for how long? Like, what's, what's, the, what's the point? Like, how many prints does this well, person need to this sell? Isn't, this, isn't a, this isn't like a legal law. I don't think... I think, I think, you have to, I think you'd have to gauge it. I think if you're... Like, my, point, my thing was, if you're making your living from it, you mm -hmm. should pay for the tools. Pay for the tools. I agree. I totally if you're agree. making your living from it. Yeah. Legally, you yeah. have an obligation to pay for it from the get-go. But I'm saying ethically, I don't think, unless you're, until you're generating. Because my point is that Adobe isn't losing any money because until you are making enough money that you can actually pay for the software, they haven't lost the sale. No. You would not have bought it anyway. Right. You wouldn't have bought it at that point. But then eventually, yeah. because this is now your career, you do go back and buy it. And this is this has always been an argument for um, people that have always gone against the record industry, saying these kids are going to grow up and buy CDs again, 
you know, of the CDs. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, or the, or on they'll buy stuff online. Yeah. The, the point is that for that is if you make it easy enough, people will do it, and you can't count every downloaded album as a lost sale because. Like, frankly, I wouldn't, like, a lot of my music collection, I would not have bought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I download and listen to it once. I'm like, oh, this is shit. Delete. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so, in the old days, they go, oh, yeah, but you would have bought a CD, and then it would have been bad, and you would have just had to get rid of it. And I'm like, no, because I wouldn't have taken the fucking risk. Okay. So now getting back to what we were talking about with Aaron. Yeah. He goes and gets those files now. Okay? Yeah. What's he doing with them? Well, we don't know because he died before he was caught before he could, and he had to get, he gave them back before he, had to he give them back before, so he didn't end up actually. No, no, it would have been like a he would have probably put it on the pirate bay or something like that as a as oh, a okay. mega torrent file like a sure. for, so he like would, as a multi he would basically you know take down that 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 um, that store system or whatever it was the. The the fact is, it's a non that thing is a non profit, and so the fact that they're they're charging so much money. Actually, since this happened, they've released a bunch of files that are public domain. So public oh, yeah. domain ones are now free to view for anyone on the web interface. Oh, okay. So they, this is actually changed. His his inter his actions have actually changed things, yeah. but we need to push to get them all to be available. Th these aren't considered crimes. They're more of um, they're more of eye openers to realize that the system's not working. Honestly, the local cops should have maybe got him on a misdemeanor. He should be charged with, like, like a protester at a rally, should yeah. be charged with just something basic, held overnight in jail, the and then released. Yeah, exactly. Not Nothing that's on the permanent record, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's where it should have gone, and it was, it was it, I think, probably because he embarrassed the fuck out of the Justice Department and the FBI when he did the other, the other one where they investigated him and everything because mm -hmm. he got away with it. Yeah. Um, I think they went, that's why they went after him this time. So they, it was personal this time. I think so. Yeah. This time it was personal. So. Alrighty, buddy. Well, that was an interesting discussion, and I don't know how much of it's actually going to make it in. <laughs> but. Um, All right. So uh, until next time. Yeah. Peace out. And fuck off. All right. And I will see you blurry online. Their stuff on their own computers, and when they hooked them up to the internet, people visited their own machine and they controlled their own data. And, you know, the fact is that could have worked. That's just as reasonable a way of doing it as anywhere else. The problem is that's just not the, where the money is. And when software gets funded, it gets funded where the money is. I mean, there are two big problems. One is technical and one's political. The technical problem is that basically computers on people's machines at home don't have the power of servers. You know, they're not on all the time. People buy these cable modems that don't have high enough upload bandwidth to be popular, you know. Cable companies have people sign user agreements that say they can't run servers from home. So if you want to do something like host a YouTube video, it's just kind of impractical to host it off of your computer, let alone your laptop, you know, which you pick up and take home with you. So it's really hard for normal people to run servers. So that's a technical problem. It means at some point you're going to have to upload your video to somebody's server somewhere else where it is run reliably. And that means inevitably giving up a measure of control. So that, the question then becomes, who do you give the control to? And users just don't care enough. You know, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Amazon or whether it's somebody who signed an agreement with them, they just don't care enough who they give it to. You know, the simplest thing is the best. Whatever gets their movie up, you know, that's all that matters to them. I mean, it sucks. Each time it sucks when somebody takes advantage of your stuff to make money for themselves. But, you know, each time it's not enough for you to do something about it, right? Each time it's okay, well, you know, they've got my videos, that sucks. Or they've got my photos, you know, that sucks. Or they have my email now, that sucks, right? But, like, they just don't put it together. You know, there's no tipping point where you say, okay, finally, I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm taking back my computer. Like, it just doesn't happen, you know. It's like, you know, another one of life's myriad little pains. <laughs>